What's up everyone, I'm Mike with woodshopmike.com and today I'm really excited to show you my multi-tool miter saw bench. And there's a ton going on in this build, so let's get right to it. These workbenches from Craig have lots of adjustability in the height, and that's one of the main reasons that I wanted to use these for the foundation of my multi-tool miter saw station. These benches are also really easy to put together, and the process is made that much more enjoyable when my little girl comes down to help me out. And it's also a bit more interesting too. I want to take a quick second and say thank you very much to Craig for sponsoring this project. They've not only made it possible for me to provide the plans for free for y'all, but they've also provided all of the benches, the fence, all the stops and accessories and whatnot. So go check out their website, grab those plans if you're interested in this project, and also check out some of the products that I used to make this happen. With all of the benches assembled, I'm ready to start moving everything into place. So each one of these tools and obviously all of the benches have adjustable feet. So that way I can make sure that the entire work surface from the far left to the far right is horizontal, both front to back and side to side. For this bench, I used black melamine for the work surface, and this piece that I'm cross-cutting right now with the ACS is going to go underneath where the miter saw sits. Uh, you'll still be able to see it, so I want everything to be consistent. Now, over on the table saw, I'm cutting a notch in the back of this piece, so that way it'll fit around a bump out in my wall. All right, so now I'm gonna cut down this piece of MDF to size, and it's gonna go on the left-hand side of this bank of three workbenches. So one last check to make sure everything is level, front to back, and side to side, and I'm ready to put in place the bottom layer for my work surface. So here I'm just making sure that the front edge is parallel to the front edge of those workbenches, and now I'm just gonna secure it with the screws that come with these workbenches. All right, so here I'm working on establishing exactly where I want the fence to be on the radial arm saws. And a radial arm saw is a little bit different than a miter saw because with a radial arm saw, you have some freedom of exactly how far forward or how far back you want the fence to be, depending on how much of the blade you want to have exposed. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm mocking up the final height of the workbench and I'm using a laser to shoot a straight line from one end to the other. Um, and once I figure out where my fence is going to be, I'm taking measurements of all of the mounting bars on the radial arm saws so that way I know where I need to have my bolt holes in the final workbench. All right, so with all of my measurements finalized, I'm over at the CNC and I'm setting up a couple of cutters to cut the base layer for the radial arm saw side of this workbench. So here I'm just showing you exactly how that cutter needs to be installed. And then I'm just snapping it into place in the tool changer bar for the automatic tool changer on my shop bot. And what you see right here, I think this process is actually pretty cool. It's going and it's automatically zeroing the length of that tool and it already knows exactly where the top of my spoil board is so it's just making a deduction in the length so let's get back to cutting so i'm turning on the vacuum to hold this sheet of mdf in place and we're going to drill some through holes for the bolts that are going to hold this work surface down to the radial arm saws those mounting bars that you saw a little while ago so the cnc is drilling the location of all of those holes and then we're going to cut out the profile in just a second So now we've just switched over to a 3 8 down cut spiral bit and as you see it's just chopping out that profile. Also you may notice that I could use a little bit better dust collection on this machine. Alright so with the vacuum pump turned off I can now take the piece off the table. I'm going to vacuum up all of the extra MDF dust, blow out those holes and as you see, I have just a little thin layer of MDF left because I don't like cutting into my spoil board. I'm just gonna use a razor blade and zip around the perimeter of this piece to clean up that final edge. 
Okay, so now it's time to keep my fingers crossed and say a little prayer that all of the mounting holes and everything uh, came out exactly how they needed to. And uh, good news, they did. So I'm going to throw a couple of bolts into this surface just to hold everything in place so it's not shifting around while I'm making measurements for where I want these Craig combo tracks to be installed. And I'm using the precision miter gauge from Craig to help me lay out where I want each one of these tracks to be located. So with all of my measurements figured out, we're now back over at the CNC. I'm loading a piece of black melamine because black looks awesome. Turning on the vacuum pump and we are going to get started running this next part. So there are a few additional steps in cutting this layer. Obviously I don't want bolts sticking out of the top of my work surface. So where each one of those bolt holes was originally cut in the other layer, we are counter boring some holes with a 3 8 down cut end mill. And then now I'm picking up a quarter inch end mill and we're drilling those through holes. So that way obviously the rest of the bolt can go through this layer of melamine. So the next thing, we're going to go back to that 3 8 end mill. That's going to finish us out. We're going to cut all of the grooves for the multi-track. And now we're cutting out the profile. And same story as before, the dust collection could be a little better. So this piece is kind of flimsy now with those deep grooves cut in it, but thankfully it didn't break as I put it up onto the surface of the radial arm saws. I just got it slid into place, everything lined up beautifully, and now I begin the task of bolting down all 2,000 or so bolts to both of these radial arm saws. And now I'm just sliding this last bench right back into place. I had it out of the way to give myself a little bit more space to work. I ended up cutting the grooves for these tracks just a little bit more tight than I had anticipated, but once the tracks were cut to length on the miter saw using an old blade, I just used my dead blow hammer to smack them into place. And to attach these to the work surface, just a handful of drywall screws did the trick. So here I'm cutting risers for the left hand side of the miter saw bench from some cutoffs of the two layers I just cut on the CNC. So over at the miter saw, I am gang cutting some MDF risers. Um, obviously I'm doing this as a batch to cut them all to the exact same length, a little bit easier. And then I'm going to be using pocket holes to attach these risers to the workbench. All right, so back at the CNC, I am loaded up and I'm cutting the two pieces for the left-hand side of the miter saw bench. Okay, so now we're ready to start assembling this left side layer. So as you see, I have my risers all laid out and they've all been pocket holed and I'm using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws to secure them to the first layer or the bottom layer of the left side of this bench. So with all the risers in place, I'm now ready to screw these two layers together. I'm just going to line up all the edges, clamp it in place, and then use a countersink bit to countersink some holes and then a whole bunch of drywall screws to hold it all together. All right, so with that done, I now have a very heavy piece of particle board that I'm flipping over. And with this top layer in place, I'm now transferring the center of each one of those risers around to the underside of this first layer. So that way I can secure it to the bottom layer with some two inch pocket hole screws. I run four screws into each one of the risers. And since black melamine is really hard to see pencil lines on, I put some blue tape down to mark my lines. So that way I can hopefully hit the center of the riser. And thankfully I did. To attach the heavy duty track, which is what I'm using for the fence for this bench, I have to have a surface to bolt it to. So here I'm using the CNC to drill a series of holes and to cut out those pieces that I will bolt the top track to. And if you see all those notches, those are going to make sense here in just a second. So you might be wondering why I'm using the Craig Foreman to drill the pocket holes instead of just cutting them on the CNC. And that's a pretty simple answer. The reason is because the Foreman still drills a pilot hole and guides the screw a little bit better than what a pocketed hole would that's cut on the CNC. At the miter saw, I have an old blade in my saw and I'm cutting down sections of the heavy duty track that are going to be the different fence sections for the radial arm saw side of this workbench. I recommend wearing a full face shield. It just helps. I don't know about you. I don't really like aluminum shavings in my eye. 
and at the table saw again I have an old blade in the saw and I'm ripping this section down it'll make sense in a little bit but I'm ripping it down for the small radial arm saw just make sure to file down those sharp edges so that way you don't cut your hand to attach the heavy duty track, I'm using quarter 20 hex bolts. And here you see those small notches. Those are so that I can actually tighten down the bolts on the right hand side of the fence. So you see it's pretty straightforward. The fence just slides right over the head of those bolts and then you just tighten them down from the back. With all the sections of the heavy duty track bolted in place, I am now ready to get this lined up and secured to the workbench. So you see I have my laser set up again and I'm just shooting a straight line from one end of the bench to the other. Once everything's in place, I clamp it down and screw it to the workbench with some one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. All right, so this is a very exciting moment. The radial arm saw is fired up for the first time in the shop and I'm cutting the kerf through the fence and through the tabletop. So this will determine uh, my cut line whenever I'm using the radial arm saw. With the fence on the left side of the miter saw installed, I'm now clamping a level across the two fences and using that as a reference for the fence on the miter saw. And once everything's in place, I just screw it down. All right, so here I'm maybe getting a little bit creative with the micro jig dovetail bit, uh, but I'm going to use this to make some drawer pulls and I'll show you that in just a second. So with that loaded into the CNC, let's get started making the pieces for the drawers. To make the parts for the drawer sides and the drawer front, I'm using half inch plywood. I'm holding it down with the vacuum pump again and that just it makes the process pretty easy. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm rough cutting out the opening and then the shop bot is switching over to the micro jig dovetail bit to cut that drawer pull. So there's your close up of that drawer pull. I think it came out pretty nice. So next up I'm using a 3 8 end mill to make a counterboard groove and this is going to allow a pocket hole screw to ride inside of this groove. Next up, it will cut a quarter inch slot in the center of this groove, and then it's gonna cut out all the pieces for the sides and the drawer fronts. So with an oscillating multi-tool, I'm just cutting through the tabs that were cut in this piece and cutting through the onion skin that was left behind so that way the parts didn't go flying across the shop and set up on my Craig Precision router table using a top bearing bit to trim off those tabs and the onion skin that's left behind. And now routing these skinnier pieces, I really like using the micro jig push blocks. Uh, I don't want to be earning the name Stumpy anytime soon. So over at the table saw, I'm ripping a couple of pieces to width that are going to be used for the front and back of each one of the drawer boxes. And hey, check out that awesome flip stop coming in handy at the miter saw already. Uh, so I'm going to cut all of these pieces to length at the miter saw as you see. And then we're going to get on to cutting the drawer bottoms out of some quarter inch plywood where I almost knock over my tripod. And back over at the miter saw using the flip stop to make some repeated cuts to bring all these drawer bottoms to their final length. Okay, so now it's time for a little bit of assembly. Uh, just glue and brad nails is all I need for these pieces, making sure to put those counter bores to the inside of the drawer box. And then here again for the drawer bottom, glue and brad nails again is all I need. So just clean up the glue squeeze out, and then I'm ready to get the drawer front lined up to screw on. I use a couple of playing cards to center the drawer face in the opening, clamp it to the drawer box, and use a couple of screws to hold it in place. So now I'm just taking a couple of quick measurements to figure out where that pocket hole screw needs to go so that way it will hold the drawer in place and keep it from falling out. So, pretty slick, right? And what's awesome is it also stops the drawer so it doesn't go too far in. All right, so you saw me use the flip stop already, but these are the heavy duty stops. Uh, these do not flip up, but they do clamp down to the heavy duty track pretty tenaciously. You can see it's not moving at all. They're obviously super easy to put together and it fits underneath the radial arm saw. So if I'm ever cutting something that short, I will use that stop instead of the other. 
All right, so here we have the precision miter gauge. These are super easy to put together. Uh, you don't really need an assembly video for this, so I'm just going to speed through it just so you can see the process. The instructions are super clear. Uh, right here, these pieces that I'm putting in help to tighten the miter gauge in the miter slots so that way you don't get that side to side play that you see a lot in table saws. So these miter gauges are great for your table saw also. And there again, you just slide it over those quarter 20 bolts. Now this piece I don't really use, but this is a stop to keep you from accidentally sliding that track off of the miter gauge. And then here's assembly of the flip stop. Now I love these flip stops. I use them on a bunch of different jigs. They are also very easy to put together. You just put a couple of bushings into each piece, the flip stop and the clamp. And to hold both halves of this stop together, you just run a long quarter 20 bolt through them and tighten down the nylon lock nut. So there you have it. You just slide it over the top of your fence. It locks into place, flips up and down out of the way. It's great. The other thing that comes with the miter gauge is a section of sticky bag measuring tape that you can set on top of the fence. Now for my application here, I'm not going to use that, but just so you know, it's an option. So I want to take a quick second and just run you through my thinking of the radial arm saw setup that I have. I'm using these miter tracks on the right hand side so that way I can use a miter gauge in conjunction with the radial arm saw. This allows me to have the radial arm saw set up at dead 90 to the fence at all times and then I can use the miter gauge whenever I need to cut an angle with the radial arm saw. This is an idea that I actually got from a fellow woodworker, Tab Adams, and the big radial arm saw actually came from him. So thanks for the inspiration, buddy. So here on the left-hand side of the miter saw bench, I have two stops set up. One is the heavy duty stop, and then I can flip down the other stop whenever I need to make a different cut. What this allows me to do is to keep those stops in place while I'm in the middle of a project. So that way I'm not having to break down my setup. Man, check all of that out. This is so exciting. I am really pumped to finally have these radial arm saws up and running in the shop. And check out all those drawers down the left-hand side and right next to the miter saw. If nothing else, it'll keep the workbench cleaner, but I can store everything from obviously pencils and tape measures to a handful of different chisels, all my files, small saws, so on and so forth. So I'm really excited about the extra small storage that I was able to build in to this workbench. If you enjoyed this project, head over to Craig's website to get the free plans. And I hope this video gave you some ideas for your own miter saw bench or multi-tool bench build. You gonna do this one? Just don't hit the camera. Nice. Oh, you hit the camera. Well. Oh, you're still there. Awesome. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I got another one queued up for you right here. And if you want other awesome content from me, check out those. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe, and until next time, have fun making something.